My emphasis will be on um, how to help somebody who is trying to fit, I mean, who's having a seizure. People, what to do when someone is having a seizure around you? The most important thing, right, is to eliminate this, any source of danger. It works every time. Don't panic. You know, once you panic, you do what you are not supposed to do. So, but once you don't panic, the next thing, look around and be sure they're in a safe place. If they're not in a safe place, get them to a safe place. For instance, if they could have a seizure, maybe on a busy road, so, or near the roadside, so you could move them away from the roadside be sure they're not around a burning gas or near an electrical wire okay so just ensure they're in a safe place and once you do that just leave them and after some minutes they'll come around yeah. next thing is that do not restrain them don't try to resist the movement or the jerking or the stiffness that they are having now you you can't stop that okay don't forget like i introduced um it's a problem with the outburst of electrical waves activity from the brain. So if there's anything you, you can do is to go and stop that in the brain. And since you can't stop that, you should not resist those um, jerking movements, those shaking. Yeah. <laughs> People in the process of resisting those movements, they do more harm than good. They, they cause injuries to people who are throwing a seizure. So the most important thing is to ensure safety of people who are throwing a fit or having a seizure. Because the seizure will end by itself after a few minutes they'll come around if there's anything you want to do is to try to cushion the head of somebody throwing a fit you know most times especially when they're on the floor sometimes they're throwing a fit and all that shaking and jerking movement is happening when they're on the floor sometimes concrete floor so you don't want a situation where they'll bang their head and injure their head if you have clothing materials or pillow or something just cushion the head okay so number four is that try to loosen any tight clothing around their neck so when you see somebody strain a feet and has a tight clothing around the neck, just take it off. Whether I call out a necktie, take it off so they can breathe very well. That's very important. Talking about breathing, don't do a CPR on a patient who is having a seizure or train a feet. Some people don't know what CPR stands for. We don't know. CPR means cardiopulmonary resuscitation. Smooth. And that simply means giving chest compressions and rescue our breath. Chest compressions like this and then rescue our breath intermittently to a patient whose heart has stopped working so why, why we do this is to temporarily take over the function of the lungs and the heart which are very crucial why we stimulate the heart and hope that the heart will pick up again but you don't do that with patients with seizures it being that someone having seizures and breathe and the heart is still working so there's no reason why you should give a cpr don't be overzealous they are not dead so maybe you just learn cpr and you are looking for somebody to try it on. Please, people having a seizure or train a feed, they are not your candidate. Stay away from them, okay? <laughs> the sixth point here is when they are having the seizures, you turn them to their side. Okay, as shown on your screen, you position them and turn them to their side. This position is what we call recovery position. This is to ensure that they do not aspirate. What does aspiration mean? Aspiration means that food substance or water or saliva finds its way to the lungs ah, huh? i'll break this down a bit you notice that what you call throat there are like two structures there passageway there's a passage for food which you call esophagus there's also the passage for um hair the airway windpipe so the two are closely related and they're just beside one another like that so when people eat sometimes food may tend to miss its way Instead, rather than passing through the passageway for food it might try to pass to the passageway for hair Okay, which is what we call the trachea or the windpipe and that's where you cough that's when the yoruba will say ah oh, just a minori, you know and you cough you see that cough is a reflex what it's trying to do is to get whatever it's trying to miss its way and get to the windpipe okay it's trying to bring it out so the cough will continue and continue until that food source it could even be a tiny grain of rice so you know is that is that powerful it coughs it out and then you are fine you are calm you know why, why? because nothing other than hair must get down to your lungs wow that's the way it's designed you mean i'm <laughs> you know when people are conscious and when they know what they're doing the the body will react and that reflex that the cough reflex will get the food out but in people who are conscious that reflex cannot work so whatever misses its way and gets to the airway will find its way down to the lung and that's very dangerous that's what we call aspiration what can i say that was made for us that aspiration is unlikely to happen in someone who is conscious. But in someone who is unconscious or someone who is having a convulsion, they can't control this. And that's why it's important to prevent by every means, food or water or saliva, to prevent it from getting down to their airway, windpipe and down to the lungs. You can't position the person with the head facing up, face facing up and um, lying down on the back. That would be very dangerous. In that position, uh, somebody can aspirate easily but when you position the person in the recovery position 
which is essentially placing the person on the side so even if there's drilling of saliva or foaming coming out of the mouth it's just going to drool out it's going to come out and then will, it will reduce the chances of the person aspirating okay and you see that's why it will be dangerous some some people will try to force things into the mouth force onions pour water into the mouth of somebody's training feet strange stuff can you now see what harm you are doing the person will easily aspirate, aspirate onions aspirate and the seizure that would normally not harm someone you now complicate the issues and make the matter worse but i know you don't know i know that's why you do it okay but now you know okay last lastly people are having a seizure and you are there you're an eyewitness note the time the seizure starts and please note the time it ends once somebody has experienced a seizure take the person to the hospital and one of the information we always ask as doctors is how long the duration of the seizure this is very important to us so please be prepared to give us that information if you can so note the time started and the time it ended lastly i just want to mention a few things what not to do when um, someone is having a seizure i've alluded to some of them earlier firstly i did mention that you shouldn't move the person except that you want to place the person in a safe environment i also did mention that don't restrain don't try to resist any movement they're, trying, they're doing no cpr don't, don't put onions in the mouth my nigerian folks you know i know this is common in nigeria i grew up watching this i remember a classmate of mine in nursery school who had a seizure and the teachers were shouting onions onions when do we get onions they have to go to neighboring houses to get onions and you know the question is have you asked yourself what exactly does onion do what has it got to do with seizures very good question maybe because they put onions and after a while the person came around they would assume that is the onions that did the job so i mean for me growing up i had to start questioning a lot of things and oftentimes this is a passed on to the next generation what do you mean and then the last thing i mentioned is for my hand because i know they are seeing a lot of things which i would i expect feedback from you okay no spoon in the mouth of somebody having a seizure why are you putting spoon i'm not sure like i said don't resist any moment you can't stop it okay while you are trying to put a spoon sometimes cause injury to structures in the mouth you give a person a cut a laceration or you even affect the tooth sometimes you give an injury and the tooth becomes loose and you are trying to do that you know that the force the thrusting of tongue and whatever movement of the jaw can be so strong at times so when you try to resist it with a spoon person can have a broken tooth the tooth can go down there and aspirate and whatever you are doing will be worse than even the seizure itself so no spoon Stop that habit, please. If any more of that from you, I'd make sure you spend the next 10 years in Greek prison. I'd like you to put in the comment section some of the habits, some of the things people do that you know when people have seizures. So, thank wrong. you for your attention. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to this YouTube channel. Share this information with your friends. I'm sure you would agree that the team shared in this piece have been very helpful. And then please like this video. If you're liking this video, will help the algorithm. Remember, your health comes first. Kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel at Dr. Health Geek. Don't forget to like and share. Bye for now.